Hello, I'm Robert Shalai, Chief of Police for Shelby Township, and welcome to Straight Talk. Today we have a very special guest, Sergeant Kevin Bailey from our Community Services Unit. Hi, Chief. Sergeant Bailey, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, you're new in our community services unit, huh? Yeah, I've been in the community service for about a month and a half now. Okay, how do you like it? Uh, I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. This is a uh, great opportunity for me. What are some of your responsibilities? Attention! Many responsibilities. Uh, some of them is uh, the Youth Academy, the Drug Recognition Expert Program, and just, uh, you know, events. Open house. Open houses handle. and just different events around the community where we need you know police presence or just to be there just to meet the public manage the social media yes. take care of stuff out of the ch chief's office i mean you guys are like jack of all trades in there huh it's it's been a great opportunity so far i'm glad to hear it you mentioned our dre program that's our drug recognition expert program what can you tell our audience about that program the drug recognition program is for officers that that show the great um, responsibility to uh, arrest uh, people that are impaired by alcohol, and then it's something that they are working towards uh, learning more about arresting people that are impaired by drugs, not just alcohol. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to be selected for that. You have to have a, a track record of many, many drunk driving arrests before they even consider you, correct? That is correct. It's, uh, they, it's, uh, it's very hard to be selected for this program. You have to show that you can arrest and detect alcohol and then you can be then you have to apply and then you are selected so currently we only have one officer that met those standards to be selected uh, into this program and, and this is the michigan state police standards yes okay and who's the officer that we selected uh that's officer uh jeff simon uh he's ex uh, marine he's highly motivated in alcohol enforcement to the point where you recognize that chief and decided that this is something that to move forward in his career, he can apply for the, the DRE program. He was selected and uh, he's uh, one of the elite officers that we have to go out and detect uh, drivers that are impaired by drugs. So now he's an expert uh, just because of practitioner with the drunk driving people, but now he can nab the people driving around high on drugs, correct? Yeah, the, these are a lot of this is roadside. So if if we have an officer that may not know what someone is on, can help detect if it's just if they're tired, or sometimes it's even medical issues. Uh, we had a, an issue not too long ago where there was an officer that uh, saw one of one of the drivers that was not acting right. I was on scene. We called a drug recognition expert. Uh, thinking that it might have been a, a drug issue, but ended up being a medical issue where we ended up saving that guy's life. He had a uh, bleeding on the brain at that time. Okay, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. What happened today? All I know is I had a huge headache, uh, sinus headache. I took some medication last night that my wife gave me. What kind I don't of know what she gave me. You don't know what oh, she gave you? Yeah, my head's a little foggy. Okay. But, um, So I, I have no idea what just happened. I have no idea. Sir, are you okay? Are you injured? Yeah, yeah no, I've got a, a headache and that's about it. Okay. And then what happened? All I know is I felt a big bump. I don't know what it was. What do you mean? I just felt a, a bump and that was it. A bump where? On the road? Yeah. Okay. Do you think you hit something? I believe I did, but I don't know what. Okay. And then what happened? Uh, and then I stopped, and then that was it. Like, I, I literally, I've got a, a big old, old headache going on, but okay. I think it's science related. Okay. Do you take any medication for it other than what you possibly took last night? I took, I took night? Some, some Benadryl this morning. This morning? How yeah. much? Two caplets, and that was it. Okay. What did you take last night? That's what I took was the Benadryl. But last night? Yeah. You just said you took it this morning. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got a headache, but I took it... Uh, this morning, I don't remember what time. Okay. Have you taken any other medications? No. No? Do you take any medication for like heart stuff? No? Okay. Um, have you drank anything last night or this morning? No. 
Well, the only thing I've drank in anything was Pepsi. Pepsi. That's what it just shows that this is what it can do. It can show that there's drug impairment and it also can rule out any medical issues that someone may be having. I see. I know that back back a while ago, there was only like 30, this is probably four or five years ago, mm -hmm. 30 DREs in the entire state of Michigan. I imagine there's probably a lot more now. Do you have any idea what the number is? Yeah, currently there is <clears throat> approximately 170. Okay. Um, and it, like I said, it is a it's a difficult program to get into. It's your your you have to apply and then you're selected to get into it uh, because you have to show that you meet all the elements to be a highly motivated officer to go out and get these uh, people that are on drugs uh, that are driving to uh, you know keep the community safe. Yeah, uh, so you said the number 170. I'm pretty sure we have approximately 14,000 law enforcement officers in the state of Michigan. So that's uh, a small number, the 170. Those are truly some of the best officers there are in the state. That is correct. And, and Jeff is one of those guys. Jeff is definitely one of those guys. Uh, he is someone that uh, a lot of officers go to for uh, advice or to ask him to come to their scenes uh, because he is highly trained in this type of uh, drug recognition expert. Uh, so he can help you know, determine if they are on any type of medication or drugs that are impairing their driving. Yeah, our community is, is blessed to have him out there. There's Absolutely. no doubt. Let's take a look at Officer Jeff Simon in action. Yeah, I'm Officer Jeffrey Simon and uh, I am a police officer with Shelby Township Police Department. I've been here for a little over three years. Hello, how you doing? Pretty good, you? Good, can I get your license registration and insurance, please? Yeah. Any idea why I stopped you? No. All right, you're going a little quick. My brother is, he's 19 years older than I am, and he's been a police officer as long as I can remember. I loved hearing his stories. I loved hearing, you know, the stuff that he did throughout his day, and uh, ultimately it made me decide to want to become a police officer myself. How much you have to drink tonight? A couple of beers. Sounds like a little bit more than a couple, my friend. The DRE is the top echelon of operating while intoxicated enforcement. Um, so we are better trained in being able to identify people who are operating under the influence of drugs. And then you've never injected any drugs or anything like that? Okay. Can you roll up your sleeves for me just so I can see? Um, specifically seven different drug categories. Uh, so the CNS depressants, uh, CNS stimulants, hallucinogens, dissociative anesthetics, narcotic analgesics, inhalants, and cannabis. It's probably an Adderall. It just gives us um, a lot more knowledge on what to look for as far as uh, operating while intoxicated goes as far as drugs. How much have you had a drink tonight? Like two drinks. Two yeah. drinks? Yeah. Okay. I stab and barrel. I'm going to run you through some tests, yeah. okay? Go ahead. You're fine. Do you have any head or Let's brain injuries? Let's go. Do you yep. have any head or brain injuries? No. Okay. Let's go. Any eye things? No, nope, nothing. On? Let's go. Any leg injuries, nope, back pain, nothing. nothing like Let's that? Let's go. You had no idea you were on the wrong side of the road? I wasn't. I was on the right side. Okay. Okay. Despite Uber and Lyft and all that stuff, the numbers have actually at least stayed steady, if not even gone up a little bit, um, as far as you know, drunk driving fatalities uh, and drunk drivings in general. Yeah, Washington one I'm behind him. He's not stopping. She's going north, guys. She's not I don't know what it is. I think people get to a certain point uh, in their night where they, you know, they call it liquid courage, and they're just like they feel like they're indestructible and they can drive home. When in reality, they're at you know a, a .20, which is almost three times the legal limit, and they absolutely should not be driving on the roadways. Do you know your English alphabet from A to Z? Yes, sir. Okay, if I were to ask you to recite it from A to Z <laughs> without singing, would you be able to do that? Um, pretty much. Pretty much or yes? Uh, I don't know. I mean, alphabet A to Z. A to Z. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, D, K, L, 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 H, I, D, K, L, L. I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know my alphabet that good. They say on average, somebody has driven drunk uh, somewhere in the ballpark of 88 times before they're ever stopped for OWI on average. Under Michigan law, if a peace officer requests that you take a PBT, you do so, or it's a citation. Will you take one? Yeah, I'll take one. Awesome. Yeah? She's got one right here for you. Perfect. Okay, so it's just like blowing up a balloon, okay? Yeah. So you're going to take a deep breath in. And I'm good, actually. I don't want to do it. Um, are you going to... Wait, can I get my... We'll get everything for you. You sure you don't want to take one? 
No, but like, why would you pull me like that? I'm not getting my phone. Because you're anything. jumping around everywhere. I'm not doing anything. I don't mean. Right, I don't have even a seat. do anything. That's so weird. <laughs> I didn't do anything. So personally, I actually don't like to hover around bars. I don't, I don't feel like it's fair just picking somebody off that's walking out of a bar. Um, what I look for as far as driving cues go, uh, obviously failing to maintain their lanes, uh, going too slow, going too fast, varying speeds. Honestly, one huge one for me, which isn't even technically considered, one of the cues of drunk driving is speeding. I catch a lot of my OWIs um, just specifically based off of speeding. Real quick, I'm just gonna look at your eyes real quick. Make sure you're good to drive. Okay. Okay. You, just one beer. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Just follow the tip of my finger. Okay. You see the tip. Right it's here? pretty obvious when you get behind somebody who's drunk that they're drunk. You don't wear glasses. No. Sir. So just yeah, just follow this. So the Matt Award or Mothers Against Drunk Driving for the state of Michigan, they're basically a entity um, that they determine who was the most influential when it comes to drunk driving. So my department gave me the MAD award for our department since I had the most uh, OWIs last year. And um, I also had a bunch of drug recognition evaluations as well. And then, so we get sent to the uh, MAD luncheon um, with a bunch of different officers around the state. And you know, they, they give out awards, even further awards when it comes to um, who was the most influential around the state. Um, so it's a huge honor as far as the OWI community goes um, to receive that award. And it's just something more that we can put in our CV or our curriculum vitae when it comes to uh, being a DRE. So that was Officer Jeff Simon in action. I hope you enjoy that segment. Like I said, and Sergeant Bailey said also, Officer Simon is one of our lead officers. He's out there every day keeping our township safe. Sergeant Bailey, let's talk about park safety. We have several parks in the community. Uh, we take great pride in keeping them safe. We work closely with Joe Youngblood and his staff. What's going on in our parks nowadays? Uh, parks, uh, the, the great thing about the parks is it's very welcoming to our community. We have a lot of things going on. Uh, but one thing is we want to make sure is that the people that are coming here, either that are outside the community or in, in the community of Shelby Township, are enjoying themselves and being safe. So we do want to increase patrols and presence there just to make sure that everyone is having fun, enjoying themselves and also safe at the same time. By increasing patrols and just being more uh, visible, we're going to be having uh, more officers in the park. We're going to be uh, mountain bikes and uh, just being more welcoming to the public. So what, what parks are we taking care of in the community? Uh, we have a lot of parks. Uh, hopefully I don't forget any of them, but I know we have Holland Ponds, we have May Stecker, uh, Gene Shepherd, Whispering uh, Woods Park, and then, the big and then, one, River and then Bends. River Bends uh, yeah. that has two entrances. So that place is it's huge, and there's always uh, people from the community walking it and, and just enjoying nature out there. Okay, what are some of the problems we're having in these parks? Uh, so one of the biggest problems that we're having right now is uh, dogs on leashes, uh, large dogs not on a leash. Uh, so recently we put out a video uh, on our social media reminding you know people that are going to be coming to the parks to have you know the the dogs on the leash to make sure that one the people are safe and two the dogs are safe because we never want anyone from our community to be injured or any animals to be injured and in I, I agree with you so i think it was around three weeks ago when they had the splash pad shooting in rochester hills and and we had to make a decision are we going to protect our parks or protect the community uh, i had to make that decision because the, the, the killer, or the, I think the shooter was mm -hmm. loose. I think he shot nine or 10 people, shot up a bunch of kids and parents at a splash pad a mile from our border. So we were worried that he was gonna go to another uh, park. So I talked to Deputy Chief Schmiller. I said, do we have enough uh, people to patrol you know, our parks, guard our parks and patrol communities? He said, no, we don't. I said, let's close the parks down, close them all down, and we will continue patrolling the community. And then we identified uh, where the shooter was actually in a township off of the Quinder mm -hmm. Estates and we were able to assist Oakland County when they grabbed the guy and got him out of there and everything. But that was a decision I had to make. I'm sure some people weren't happy with me, but uh, we, we, have to, we have to police the whole community, not just the parks, if that makes any sense. We only had a limited amount of officers to handle 36 square miles. And uh, I don't know what other people would have done, but it was a no-brainer for me. I called uh, the supervisor. He agreed. We shut him down, and that mm -hmm. was it. So, all right, besides loose dogs, what are some issues, uh, safety issues for people to be aware of? 
Uh, just, you know, just anything. Just make sure, like, when you do leave your vehicle, make sure you don't have any valuables out. Uh, make sure everything is locked. Um, just, you know, always just in any day, just always, you know, know your surroundings, but also have fun. Like, we, we want people to come here. We want people to have fun, but also just be safe in the, at the same time. And, and be responsible, obviously. Absolutely. I know we have some issues at, at Riverbends with the kids going all the way in the back and, and uh, doing some stuff back there. What's going on back there? Back there are, that you're talking about is near, near a river uh, that's going through it. There is kids that go back there that will kind of, you know, hang out and party and stuff like that. Um, we do have officers that will go out on foot on, on nighttime patrols and just double check to make sure that uh, that's not an issue. Uh, we never want anyone to uh, do something that's going to put them in jeopardy or in danger down, at, you know, in the park. So we want to make sure that it's safe and we get them out. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. How is the, uh, the new splash pad? How's that doing? Uh, the splash pad is great. Every time I go by there, uh, it's always filled with kids. You know, that's something that we always have, you know, patrols in the area to make sure that, you know, again, we're keeping our community safe. Okay. Very good. Let's take a look at some footage. Stacy's, uh, pile up for us of our parks. It's important to patrol the parks because we want to make sure that everyone is safe. We want to make sure that our citizens and people that are coming into our area that are going to be safe. We also want to know what's going on in the park. So it's, it's always good to have a different view uh, of the patrol from like a mountain bike kind of view. So we have officers on bikes that are going to be riding around and getting more up and close in the area. The kind of issues that we're finding in our parks are uh, sometimes we'll have like juvenile issues. Uh, one, one issue that I had uh, that been brought up to me the other day was uh, other motorized uh, bikes that are going to be that are riding on our paths. We're going to have a mountain bike patrol unit uh, that's going to periodically be inside the parks. Uh, we have a, a large park area in Shelby Township. Many different parks that have different types of walking paths. There's bike paths. Um, and that will give us the opportunity to get into the parks deeper to make sure that uh, everyone is behaving themselves and make sure that everyone is being safe and having fun at the same time. Another thing about uh, our bike patrol unit is uh, they're more approachable. So citizens feel more comfortable approaching officers on their bikes opposed to in a vehicle. So sometimes it is, it is easier for officers to be riding through the park and have someone come up and approach them and may uh, talk to them just about everyday things or about an issue that they may have had. So not only is it a deterrent for crime, but it's also a public relations uh, aspect to it where we can be in the parks and helping people and meeting people. We want to make sure that everyone that's coming out to Shelby Township is having a good time, being safe, and just enjoying themselves while they're in our parks. Uh, we love people coming to our parks, we love meeting new people, and we're excited for this year and we're excited to meet everyone that comes up to us. So if you do see someone on a bike, and you want to say hi, those are the, some of the best officers to reach out to and say hello to. I hope you enjoy that segment of our parks and we hope you enjoy our Shelby Township community and our parks this summer. So for our new segment, we have Officer Scott Phelps. Scott, our court officer, and you're also a member of our uh, Shelby Township Police Officers Benevolent Association. And I think you've been here around at our police department around 21 years. Yes, sir. 22 coming up. Yes, sir. Yeah, don't ever sell a veteran short, not even a few months. So <laughs> there you go. 22 year veteran, Scott Phelps, one of our classiest officers we have, a, a total gentleman. And we're honored to have you on our show today. Well, thank just you. So you know. Thanks for having me. No, nope, I'm glad to have you. So uh, our, I want you to tell our residents about our Benevolent Association. Uh, why did we start it? What was the purpose of it? And where we're at today? Yeah, the Benevolent Association was set up after. Uh, Sergeant Dan Camerzel passed away back in 2022. Unexpectedly, we lost him. And after his death, there was a mad scramble as far as um, to, number one, figure out how to have a funeral, uh, how to pay for it, and along with how to take care of Dan's family, Jill, 
um, uh, financially, emotionally, and just just a lot was going on at the time. Um, there was a scramble as far as the funeral to try to get it paid for, and we realized that actually you, you had stepped up and got tons of uh, donations from businesses to take care of it. But we realized that if, God forbid, this were to happen again, if we ever lost anybody, that we needed another another avenue to, to help pay for things. So the Benevolent Association was set up just for first responders to assist with their family during tragic times, whether it was a death um, or maybe a, a, a medical issue or financially, just anything we can help first responders out. So that was what it was. And the support staff, That's not correct. just the first responders, but everybody that works at our place is, is family. Our dispatchers, our civilians, they're just important as, as our first responders. Exactly, Every, yeah. everybody that, that works in the building. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, we've set it up, we got it up and running. How's it doing so far? What, 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 what plans have we had and what are we doing with it? We've had, a, I would say, a very successful first year. Uh, we had a golf outing that uh, we had to tribute Sergeant Camerzel. So we called it the first annual Dan Camerzel golf outing. We had that back in June and overwhelming support. We sold out the entire outing. We had over 144 golfers and um, raised quite a bit of money. Um, I would say well over $20,000 to put into the Benevolent Association. That's great. Yeah. That's great for a startup. Yes. And then what are we doing moving forward? We also are planning currently um, in the fall, it's gonna be September 18th at Coyote Joe's. We have a, uh, a local band called Family Tradition that is gonna, that has actually volunteered their time for us and we're gonna sell tickets and basically have a good night where uh, uh, the band's gonna play, everybody's gonna get fed and just have a good time and raise money for the Benevolent Association. I heard the tickets are pretty cheap. They're like $50 a piece. I believe so, yes. Yeah, and they're setting them up where they can buy them uh, online. I don't know if it's gonna be our social media or our Shelby Township Police Benevolent Association link where you're gonna be able to buy tickets online. Yeah, but, we're still working through that. Yeah, yeah we're gonna, but here's the bottom line. We'll, we'll have it on our social media, the link, to make sure people, if they wanna buy them, I think there's 600 tickets available and we're expecting to sell out, correct? Yes, yes, so it should be a, a great time and uh, raising money for a good cause. Now, uh, we had a tragedy in our law enforcement community a few weeks ago. Deputy Reckling from Oak County Sheriff's Department was murdered down in Detroit and uh, three kids and a pregnant wife at home and, and Romeo and our, our board stepped up. Yes, we uh, the, the board got together and uh, donated $2,500 to the family directly to help them out during this time. Yeah, so we're not only taking care of ourselves, we're taking care of, of, our, of our law enforcement community around us. Exactly. It's the right thing to do. Exactly. Uh, I know Officer Joe Bocci really stepped up also. He knew Deputy Reckling. Uh, he played football, football with him at Romeo High School, and he ran his own drive, and it was, I think it was uh, as successful or more successful than our own check that we wrote. Yeah, he spearheaded. Um, the idea was to help out the family with, with all those kids, um, you know, whether it was uh, gift cards uh, financially, maybe uh, some people cook some cook some meals and froze it um, just so that they have something, you know, that, that hopefully help her out. You know, it's a, it's a lot to just cook for, for a whole family. Yeah, so just course. to kind of make it a little easier on them. Um, so I, I believe that was, that was very successful as well. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, so of all the things that we've done under my administration in the last nine and a half years, this is one of the proudest things for me is this Benevolent Association. It was uh, I don't want to brag, but it was kind of my idea. I wanted to get it going. I made a mental note during uh, Sergeant Cameron's death that we need to have our own association so we could deal with a lot of these issues and problems, you know, financial issues where I can't get the money from the township, but we need money if that makes any sense. And I made a mental note, and Jeremy Herman, one of our young officers, has really stepped up. He's like actually got everything up and running. There's a bunch of IRS regulations and codes that he had to, he had to work through, and it took several months for us to actually get rolling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, and there's been a lot of work, yeah, behind the scenes. Um, it's been, I would say, challenging just because we're, this is the first time we've ever done anything like this. But all in all, to see where we've come, I think it's been a it's been a total success so yeah, far. Yeah, I agree with you. And then your good friend uh, Terry Hogan, I think he appointed himself president. I missed one meeting, and I came back, and the guy's got a title of president. So I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah, uh, very very deserving, I should say. Yeah, he, he works very hard for our association. He cares. Uh, we have another tra a a tragedy in our uh, in our Blue family at the station. We're working through it. We talked to uh, the person involved yesterday, and we offered financial help to him. And he said, "Not now. Uh, if I need it, I'll, I'll ask you." But it was nice for us to be able to to offer it to him. If that makes any sense, you know. Yeah, and that, that's what it's for. It's for uh, for you know just just something to help out. 
maybe yeah. maybe help uh, help a family, whether it's somebody's sickness financially. Hopefully, we never have to have to um, deal with another death, but it'll be there if we if we need it. I have a goal uh, to raise five hundred thousand dollars in that fund. It's probably going to take several years, but once it gets there, it's you know it, it'll be able, we'll be able to take care of any issues that we have. And it's going to last, but beyond us, um, it's going to go. Oh, yeah. It's going to go. Yeah. I want, to, I want to start getting young guys involved behind us, mm -hmm. one after the other. Whenever we lose somebody, prop in. One of the persons I want to get involved is Jason Armstrong. I've already talked to him about that. I want to get, and then some of the young officers, you know, that that Herman knows that are going to come in and uh, add value and and pull their sleeves back and, and and try to help. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be good for a long time. Yeah, I agree. Scott, thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate the information on our Benevolent Association. Good luck the rest of your career. And we value everything you do for us. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You've been watching Straight Talk. We'll see you next month.